Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to 10,000 and Below, a video series where I go through the games that are ranked on BoardGameGeek, a huge database on board games, and lower. We often look at the top games, now I want to take a look at some of the other ones that we might not you know, normally pay attention to. So we're going through 100 at a time, and in this particular video, I'm just looking at some of them I know about, some of them I don't, some of them I just skip. We're going to find out as we go. But we always look at the first one, which here is Royal Hearts. So Royal Hearts, which I'm assuming is a variation on hearts to some degree. Hearts variant where each of the queens plays a role. The Queen of Hearts doubles the points for hearts collected. The Queen of Spades counts 26. That's more than normal. The Queen of Clubs negates the Queen of Spades. The Queen of Diamonds counts as negative 10. That's fine, but couldn't you just... Now that you know that, use a regular deck of cards? No? Nah, well. All right, we have Electronic Jungle Speed. Ooh, 18 EZ. So this came out in 2009. This was my first 18 XX game and last one. It is an easier version. It's meant to help people learn the system built from the ground up. You can still see it looks fairly complex. It was okay. Uh, I didn't hate it, my experience with it, but I don't know that I would want to continue playing these kind of games. I, I, these are the kind of games that I can appreciate and admire from a distance, but I'm not really interested in myself. Oddly enough, this one did not rise very high there uh, on the list. Only 83 people rated it, too. All right, Royal Tank Corps. Guillotine. Now, there's several games called Guillotine. This is not the one you're thinking of. This is just a variant that, uh, it's not even an actual game. It's just the rules for a game with a deck of cards. So, okay. Well, that's kind of interesting. Seven Swords, Adam and Eva. Now, this is an interesting series of uh, games, Fun for Two. This is from Ravensburger. This is from Aaron Weisblum. Many of you might know him from, uh, he co-designed a lot of games with Alan Moon, including the 10 Days uh, series. And so you can see here, it was a game in, it was a two player back and forth. You were trying to pick special fruits and your opponent will decide what happens to your cards. Very basic graphic design, but I thought at the time that this would kind of start like a new two player line to rival Cosmos, and it did not. Uh, and in fact, I particularly didn't care for this game at all even though I was kind of hoping to do so. Hordes of Grimoire. Is this a, a war game? Looks like it. Oh, no, it's not. It's a two-player you're trying to... I thought it was a, a war game, but it's actually... You're running Dusk Fins. Very fantasy-looking game. When did this game come out? 2015. Oh, this is a John Cloudus game from Smallbox. Yeah, his games never have gotten a ton of recognition. This is one I've not played. All right, moving down through, there are a couple war games. Now here's a game called Columns. Now I remember seeing Columns. Uh, this is also from Pin International. I've talked about them before. Uh, a company that was originally based out of Thailand because they got some really wonderful wood there. And for a while, they were associated with Out of the Box. Columns is a game that you might think is lucky. And I played against someone from the Pin International and they whooped me multiple, multiple, multiple times until I finally figured it out. But you're trying to put these different pieces on and block your opponent's pieces from being on the top, and it's those, it's these little round pieces that will score for you. And it's just taking turns putting down the different pieces. The round ones can only go on top of another round one or on your own, and you can't put one on top of another blocker. So some interesting uh, ways to play it. I thought it was a pretty good game. So that's Columns. Pretty boring name, though. Napoleon West Riding Revisited. Attack Cube. Berserk Knights and Villains. 100 Day Battles. Well, that one has 187 ratings. And so does Wig Out. Very different games. 100 Days Battles is a game from Avalon Hill. Uh, this is one of the old map games you can see here. Waterloo. Ah, this is an old game. When did this come out? I'm going to guess 70s, 79. Yeah, the box cover is aged okay. I think the box cover still looks good. Wig Out. This is a game from Game Right where you are trying to get rid of cards matching different colors of hairstyles. So this is a kid's game. As you can see, it's a really silly artwork with crazy hair. 
and kids would like that. So that's it's a, definitely a kids game. Then we have a Fatal Attraction, the Gali Palo campaign, which is a war game, Lupin the Third. This one has 156 ratings. This came out in 2011. Oh, it was a Japan anime game. I really don't know anything about it. That's an interesting looking board with different actions that you can take. Huh. What's the, uh, the flavor text for this? It's from a manga series, Lupin 3. Okay. And you are the thief or his friend or a swordsman. It's a reverse Scotland Yard, and you're trying to steal the treasure and escape. Well, that's interesting. Sounds like a cool idea. Well, then Res Publica, 2230 AD. This is 121 ratings. This is from Reiner Knizia. And so this was originally called Res Publica, where you're traveling to the future, trade and cards. This is from Chaos Publishing. Huh, Heidelberg. Wow, it looks very... I think my, my biggest complaint with this is that it looks generic. I don't know what any of this means. So some of those aliens look cool. But Reiner Knizia, you know the theme's not going to be super strong. Nicaragua, is this a war game? Yes, yes it is. And let's jump down here. Transylvania Curses and Traitors. This came out in 2015 from Wi-Buy Games from Lauren and Jamie Cunningham. I wonder if this was a Kickstarter. I'm not seeing it here. There are vampires, werewolves, and zombies. The government, the governor is asking people to come in. You're an adventurer. I've not heard of this one, but it has a lot of ratings. So I'm assuming, ooh, that's a lot of text. Not a big fan of the graphic design. That's okay. Well, that graphic design is a little bit better. There is still a ton of text on those cards. The vampire, the werewolf, the zombie. I do like seeing all those different tiles put together. That looks good. I don't know. Well, it's a lot of votes for a game. Some more antiquity, phase line, smash, discretion. Shh. Actually, I'm curious what that one's about. Let's look. Discretion. Game of real estate development and speculation. That was not what I was expecting it to be. The real estate game. Ah! Look how boring that looks. It must be a decent game, though, because it's still pretty high up in the 10,000s. Oh, my. I would never touch this game. That's how bad it looks. It might be a good game, but wow, that looks bad. All right. Let's see here. Infected. 2017, 271. This is from Black Forest Studios, Brian Sloan. The Great Black Death is coming to Middle Ages. A plague doctor visits you. Can you trust him? It's a social deduction game where one person's a plague doctor spreading the plague. And you need to get rid of them. You're trying to vaccinate other players. Okay. This is uh, certainly a, a timely style game. Not a bad cover. Nice artwork. A miniature probably for no reason at all. I'm going to make a wild guess that this was a Kickstarter, too, since it came out in 2017. Huh. But it definitely is one that I did not hear of before now. All right. Gelato Mio, Three Stones. A little abstract game. Always curious about these. Uh, three Stones, score points, getting your things three pockets in a row. There are black and white stones and clear stones that count for both players. Or in this game, it's orange and blue. That's a pretty board for sure. That's a very patriotic board. <laughs> I guess not always be black. There's the black and white one. That looks classy. I like the concept of it. I feel like I've seen this somewhere before. 2000 though. 20 years old. Hmm. All right, let's see here. Ooh, Lionheart. 866 ratings. I played this one as a kid. I remember this game very much. You had these all these plastic figures that you moved around the board and fought against one another and rolled dice. It was like Memoir 44, but back in the day uh, from Parker Brothers. And so you have heavy infantry, infantry, mercenaries, peasants, etc. You have to take out your opponent's king. Uh, I don't think this game is that good. As you can see, I gave it a rating of 5. 
But having all these troops, and I guess these people painted theirs. I don't remember them being this painted. But it was like an, it's like a beginner's war game of sorts. So it has a lot of fond memories. Nuts. Mr. Face. Hey, Mr. Face. I actually... I think I played Mr. Face. I'm going to give it a five, unfortunately. Because you're making faces here with this. And this looks pretty cool, right? Like... Something stuck in my teeth, la la la, I can't hear you, spicy, what's that smell, oops, sour. This is an interesting game that really has like a one-time play in it. There's only so many faces you can make, and it gets a little samey after a while. So, unfortunately, I, I like the concept of it, but it didn't have a lot of long-term playability to it. Ooh, Submarine. Now, I did not really care for Submarine because I'm not a huge fan of many of Leo Calavini's games. And this was definitely one of his games that was very, very abstract as you move these submarines around. A very pretty board, uh, or at least for 2004 it was a pretty board, where you move these submarines went and down from boats and tried to collect different things. Cool concept, but it didn't work for me. Fruit Fair. This one here is from What's, What's a Plague Games. This was one of their games that uh, you are trying to get different fruits and you're collecting fruit in front of you. The board is, the fruit was neat. It was these like half, half spheres, not a little bit more than half actually, but they looked really cool when they were on the board and you're just collecting them. This is almost a kid's game, I think. So that's why I, I said it was fine. It was a fine game. It came out 12 years ago, um, but I don't know that I'd go out of my way to get it now. Nonsense. Classic. <laughs> so, I like the name of this one. Um, what is it? It's a public domain game. You tell a story with a specific theme, and you must use certain words within that story. And then players have to guess which words you have to use. It's named as blah, blah, blah. Well, that's interesting. So, well, that's all in another language. Do we have, is, there any, is there any English ones for this? There might not be. Oh, well, there's some... Okay, so here's the words you need to use. Diplomat Academy, Jaguar, Coral, Icon, and Mashed Potatoes. Maybe I missed it. Maybe the... Oh, yeah, there it is. An uncouth driver takes your parking space. You are sitting, visiting an old house, and the floor drops away underneath your feet. Okay. So they give you a, a thing to say, but you have to say some words. So if I had to say Mashed Potatoes... <laughs> it does sound like an easy game to break, though, because then you would just say wild and random words in your story. And then, then people would guess those, I'm guessing. I would try it. Pixel Lincoln, the deck builder game. I remember this was a big deal when this came out. This uh, 2013, this is one of the earlier Kickstarters that came out from Jason Tagmeyer. Um, and people made a big deal about it. I thought the theme of it was pretty fun. You had Pixel Lincoln going through and fighting things. This was back in the whole, you know, Lincoln and all these different uh, people fighting against stuff. But the game itself is just not that good. The game itself, you just, you, you're going through and, is that Rich Summer? Evil Rich Summer. Well, there you go. It's it's just a, it's a very poor deck builder, unfortunately, and so I couldn't give it a very good rating. Boof Bull, I reviewed about a year and a week ago. Um, this is a really pretty game. It has the these are pre-painted miniatures, very similar to the Crossmaster miniatures. In fact, they are the Crossmaster miniatures. It's like a a football style game, not very well written rules, and just not a very good back and forth game at all. I was very disappointed by it. Alrighty. Well, I'm not saying a lot of good things about these, which is, I guess, why many of these are rated low. Not because of what I said, but because of other people. North German Plane. Aristo Maze. This came out in 2014. Oh, this is one of the... This is from Baca Fire, where you build a secret catacomb, and you had to, your party breaks the gate. So you had to go through this thing here, and you're not an adventurer. Man, it's been a really long time since I've uh, played this one. Um, so I wouldn't be able to tell you about it. Beta bots. Now, beta bots. One cool thing about beta bots is the artwork. Uh, Tina Bongiorno 
it does the little dice guys for the dice tower. So you can see her same style of artwork here. So her artwork is great. This is where you basically build up a robot and you're fighting other robots in it. I like the idea of it. A multiplayer game, you're bidding on stuff. At the end of the day, though, the game just wasn't that good. You kind of bid, and it was a little bit rich get richer problem. Dwarves Incorporated. Now, this one I liked. You'll see it has an 8. Now, I think part of the, the problem with Dwarves Incorporated is the fact that it doesn't look good. Look at that. It doesn't look that good at all. Um, I think the board looks busy. The cover doesn't look bad. It looks like a 1980s game. But I did enjoy this one as you are digging around and going through tunnels and opening treasure chests. And then there's like a little bit of a stock market thing to it. It is, it's, it's fun. Uh, there's the Risk Star Trek 50th Anniversary Edition. Did you know Risk had any Star Trek edition? Huh. It's just straight up Risk. Uh, I know some people out there love this and are collecting it. All right, seven, Tahiti, from Ralu. I looked at this one five years ago. Let's see if I remember it. A trick-taking game. You play a power card. Whoever plays the highest power wins it. Oh, I briefly remember this one. Um, what? I gave it a seven, so I must have enjoyed it to some degree. has very dark artwork. You play a card to win a treasure with the most power you win. The treasure is unidentifiable. Oh, I see. I remember now. And the dealer led. And you looked at what the dealer led, and then you decide if you were going to win the trick or not because they knew what the card was. Photo finish, the final rush. This one came out two years ago. Uh, this one here is a racing game as you race your cars down, and there's going to be different things. Yes, I like this one. I remember this one. You turn over the card, and Different things are going to happen based on the icons that are in the card. Probably kids would like this more than not. The Business Game from 1965. This has 315 ratings. Oh, there's a version of it called Mine a Million. That sounds a little bit better from Waddington's. Oof. Well, there's pounds and dollars. Different versions. Uh. This definitely looks like the kind of game that I would see in a thrift store as a kid and I would want because it looked interesting and I was like, I'll learn business from it. But it doesn't have a lot of good ratings. Superhero Squad Card Game. I think this is probably too low. I like the Superhero Squad Game okay for what it is. You have these cards that they're like mini superheroes. So this is the Human Torch. And you can see they're kind of a little cartoony. There's Thor on a pony. And each round, you're going up in your power, and you're playing, and it's very similar to other collectible card games. It is a collectible card game, and it's just very light and frothy. But it's, it's a fun diversion. Here's Battlestar Galactica. This one is based on the original Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, it looks like you're playing a whole war game with that stuff. Astro Drive. Uh, this is from uh, Stronghold Games. I'm actually surprised this one's rated so high because it's just not that interesting of a game. You're just, you're driving your spaceships down and you're playing different cards to maneuver them around obstacles. I just didn't find it very interesting at all. Uh, let's see here, Dragon's Cave, The War of Jenkins' Ear. Well, that is a, it's a large conflict in the Caribbean between England and Spain. I guess that was a war. Definitely a war game. I did not know there was such a thing called the War of Jenkins' Ear. Something must have looked like an ear there. Star Wars Pocket Model TCG. Now, this game, I don't know if you remember the Pocket Model series, but these were ones where you would get a card and you would punch out the pieces and then build the models. And so you can see here that this came out, has attack, and honestly, it looks interesting enough, and I think I might have got into this, but unfortunately... Five years later, Star Wars X-Wing came out. But it's still kind of neat to see the different things that you can build. And this might be one of those ones where if you could hunt it down and find the stuff and build it, it'd be fun. I don't know that I ever actually played the game, but I definitely looked at it. But it also, considering it has all those ratings, not very high. Humboldt's Great Voyage. 
This one doesn't have my rating on it yet. I'd have to go back in my thing to see what I gave it, probably a six. It's a game in which you're picking up a group here and dropping them off. It feels like five tribes, but way more random. And it's an interesting game, but not interesting enough, I think. Lunatics Loops. I mentioned this one uh, because this is from Matt Leacock. That's right. Matt Leacock created this way back in the day before he was famous from pandemic and such. And you're just going around a racetrack and keep your cars in one piece. I've never played this one, but I definitely have heard of it. And that is clearly not high quality components. But hey, every designer needs to start somewhere. Sticks and stones. I wonder if they break bones. Oh. This looks like kind of a, it's a metagaming micro game. Ooh, that's a lot of counters. Ugh. Not good quality components, but I like the name of it. Sticks and Stones. It has 142 ratings. This one has 128. I can't pronounce it. Vem, a Troika. It's from Devere. It happens in a fictional country called Portugalandia, where there'll be its different power struggle. I'm guessing this one never came out in English. All right, let's see if I can find one. Operations Shoestring, Chronology, The Battle of Alma, Doolittle, and Weighty. The Adult Game of Negotiation. It's two people doing a legal... Is this an actual trial, Doolittle versus Weighty? I wonder why they picked the name Doolittle. I'm assuming people would just associate that with Dr. Doolittle. Campaign for Guadalcanal. Santa's Bag. Oh, this is a good one. It came out in 2014. It's just about giving kids, good kids, good presents. And you need to get the right stuff to build the right toys to give it to kids. It's a fun game for families, and it has a Christmas theme, and there's very few of those. Jumble Jam. Nimby. Hey, Nimby's there. Nimby's on the list of games I need to... It's one of the B games that are out there. Pyramidion. All right, so Pyramidion is here. Each player plays an Egyptian in charge of a giant construction thing. Okay. There's a lot of Egyptian-themed games, but this one looks pretty neat. You're turning in tiles to get cards and things like that. Huh. It's from White Goblin Games. I wonder if this one ever came to America or not. 2012. Barbarian Vince. You know, as opposed to Barbarian Joe and Barbarian Sam. It's a solitaire game. You're Vincent the Barbarian. So then why is it called Barbarian Vince? Uh, TF22 Load. I do remember this one here because it came with these really cool little cubes that stack like that. And these little things, these creatures back and forth. I thought this one was okay. It's a back and forth uh, player game. It came in as a little gray tin. And you're trying to have the container majorities and score points at the end of three rounds. Uh, then we have Igor, or Igor, the monster making game. You're a mad scientist creating things. I thought this was okay. Not bad, just trying to get the right monster parts. And it has fun dice. It's from r, r Games, so it's a silly, light-style game in which you're creating your own Frankenstein. The artwork's really nice. Let's see here. There's Az Azteca. Azteca here. You're the emperor of one of the four great 15th century people. Oh, interesting. Well, there's some... This sure looks like a Euro game, actually. I must have, I don't know, let's see, Pascal Bernard, Clash of Arms Games. Is it a war game or not? Maybe it is a war game. 2000, 20 years ago. Alrighty, jumping down, Southern Pacific, The Forgotten City. Well, that looks pretty, so we got to quick give that one a whirl. It's from 2 Plus Games. Yeah, I really like that cover. Ah, it doesn't look bad. Oh, some nice wooden pieces. Huh. I don't know if I've ever seen this one come across our desk. Ah, because Z grabbed it. Z Garcia! All right. Let's see. Tag La Revancha. 
Jurassic with a K instead of a C. Looks like you're forming dinosaurs. Oh, I do like that look, though. That's pretty neat. So you're looking for dinosaur bones, and you're trying to collect them. There's 32 cards. You reveal a card, and you'll score points. Ah, grabbing bones. Well, that doesn't look like a bad little game. Maybe it's a kid's game or just a family-style game. And then finally, we always look at the last one, stack. Stack is an abstract strategy in five to five grid. You can move your pawn like a rook in chess, carry a token with you to build a stack, four, three high stacks to win. All right. Well, that looks like a fascinating little game. Simple design publishing. Well, there you go. Well, that's it, folks. Another 100 games we've gone through as we continue to delve into the 10,000 and below. What games do you think were interesting or I didn't talk about or I talked about and you want to talk about them? Either way, let me know in the comments. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching the Dice Tower.